Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about sacramentals that are typically worn. So many people have heard of scapulars or miraculous medals, maybe St. Benedict medals, or maybe a little bit more rare is a Marian consecration medal or bracelet or ring. Um, many of these are considered sacramentals for different reasons. Uh, these are, I think, typically the most unique because some of them were, were given specifically by Our Lady in apparitions. Uh, you might ask, what is an apparition? An apparition is when Our Lady, our Blessed Mother Mary, shows up or appears to someone and provides them with maybe some knowledge or some, some item, like the scapular, for, for an outpouring of grace in some way. So Our Lady appeared to St. Simon Stock, who was a Carmelite. And at this time, the Carmelites were kind of struggling in their spirituality. And Our Lady appeared to him and told him, first she gave him the scapular, though it didn't look like this. It looked, it looks a little bit different. If you've ever seen a Carmelite or a Benedictine habit, they have a long, black or brown uh, square piece of cloth on the front that, that runs down the front of them. This is a scapular. So that is the, the most traditional and uh, religious use of a scapular. But for lay people, um, this is sufficient. So this serves the same purpose that the Carmelite scapular is uh, serves. So what Our Lady did when she appeared was she gave St. Simon Stock the scapular, and then she promised that uh, anyone who was wearing a scapular faithfully would be saved from the fires of hell. And then later on, she appeared again to St. John, uh, to Pope John the 20 22nd, and promised that on the next Saturday of the, uh, of the calendar, if so, if I die on a Friday, then that next Saturday, if I go to purgatory, she will appear in, in purgatory and save me from purgatory if I'm wearing a scapular. Now, oftentimes this is one of the most uh, scrupulized uh, sacramentals in the Catholic Church because a lot of people will say, oh, that sounds like witchcraft or it sounds like, you know, making deals and it, it just sounds shady, right? Because Our Lady seems to be saying, if you do this, then I'll guarantee this for you. So if you wear a scapular, then you can go out and sin all you want and do whatever you want. And then when you die, you'll, you'll immediately go to heaven or you'll spend a little bit of time in purgatory and then go to heaven on Saturday. But the reality is uh, Our Lady asks that we wear the scapular faithfully. We wear it well which means we're paying respect to it. And to do that means to be striving for a life of grace and virtue. And if we're not doing that, then we will be unable to receive the graces of the scapular. So just wearing the scapular does not guarantee that no matter what I do, however I do it, however I live my life, that I'll go straight to heaven no matter what. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is that through, through the wearing of the scapular, I will be predisposed in my life through grace to grow in virtue, grow in, in merit, and grow in relationship with our Lord. And through that, I will have the grace of salvation through the intercession of Our Lady, who's the greatest intercessor, intercessor behind our Lord. Now, Next is the St. Benedict Medal. The St. Benedict Medal is also one of the most unique uh, sacramentals because it has, it's not, the blessing for a St. Benedict Medal is a little bit different than the blessing for most other sacramentals. For a St. Benedict Medal, first the priest blesses it, and then he also gives it an exorcism. This is because of some of the, the, the letters on the back. So there, if you've, if you've ever seen one up close, there are tons of different letters and they all don't seem very connected. But 
what it what it says is uh, these are all abbreviations of different phrases, and one of them is something along the lines of um, "I cast Satan away from myself" or "I banish Satan away from himself myself," and uh, that he may drink his own poison. So this is an exorcism in and of itself, praying that prayer. Uh, and for the priest, when he blesses a St. Benedict medal, he gives it an exorcism so that it has extra protections against spiritual warfare. So when, when or if you're dealing with spiritual warfare, St. Benedict medals are a great option for having near you. Uh, again, this, this could be scrupulized as uh, sounding superstitious, that if I wear this, then the devil will never attack me. And that's not what it's saying. What it is saying is that I separate this thing, I separate this metal from the evil one, from, from the power or grip of the devil. And through that, through my wearing of it, I separate myself from the power or the grip of the devil. And so God will impart grace on me, uh, as he wills to to grow in a life of virtue and grace again and through that virtue and grace i will become repugnant to the devil that through humility through all of the other virtues the devil won't even want to be near me let alone accost me or or be be close to me to to scare me in some way because he'll see my grace he'll see my virtue and that will frighten him next is the uh, Marian consecration. So, uh, for for myself, this is my Marian consecration bracelet. Some people have a Marian consecration ring. I, when uh, a number of years ago, I consecrated myself to Our Lady, and one of the things that one of the things that Saint Louis de Montfort recommends is wearing some physical object to remind me of my consecration to Our Lady. Now, oftentimes people think that consecrating yourself to Our Lady means that she will give you all of these graces and, and that she'll pour all of her grace and all of her love upon you, which is, is true. But more important than that is an understanding of my enslavement to Our Lady. So it sounds a little bit frightening that I've enslaved myself to Our Lady, but if you think about it, you know, having this chain around my hand is like chaining myself to Our Lady. And who better to chain yourself to than our Blessed Mother, the Mother of God. So in chaining myself to Our Lady, in making myself one of her slaves, I give her all of the merits, all of the graces that I receive in this life to do with as she wills. So if there's a, a grace or a merit that I receive, then I offer it to her. And maybe there's someone out there that needs it far more than I do. And she knows who that is because she's so close to God and she gives it to that person. Now, I don't know who they are. I don't know what they need, but she does. And so through that grace, through that relationship with her, I can offer her all that I have and all that I am so that she can do with that as she wills because her will is ultimately united to God's. So oftentimes we ask during that Marian consecration, people may ask, what can Mary do for me? And the real question that we should be asking is what can I do for Mary? And this bracelet is a good reminder of that. Now this brings me to another aspect of sacramentals, which is uh, third class relics. So I was recently in Rome and I had the chance to serve mass at St. Philip Neri's altar. So St. Philip Neri was a saint in Rome during, he lived during the Counter-Reformation and his body is in a, in a coffin, a glass coffin, so you can see, see his body. And one of the things that the church allows us to do is make third class relics of holy objects. So a first class relic, if you know, is a body part of a saint. A second class relic is usually some object that they had. So maybe a saint who prayed the rosary often or had a rosary, that rosary will be taken apart into little pieces and those will all be second class relics. Or a saint like uh, a saint who was a monk or 
a sister or a nun, they had habits and those habits will be taken into little pieces and made into second class relics. Now, a third class relic is any object that has been touched to the body or maybe the reliquary, which is the, the object that holds the relic. So any object that's been touched to one of those two things uh, can become a third class relic. So when I was in Rome, I was able to touch this to the altar or to the glass coffin of St. Philip Neri and make it into a relic of St. Philip Neri. Now I did this because St. Philip Neri had a great devotion to Our Lady and I wanted to be able to be closer to him and receive more of his intercession so that I can be closer to Our Lady, which obviously makes me closer to Our Lord. Finally, moving on with uh, the Miraculous Medal. The Miraculous Medal was given to St. Catherine La Barre by Our Lady in a number of apparitions. So St. Catherine La Barre was a daughter of St. Vincent de Paul, which not literally a daughter of St. Vincent de Paul, but in a community or religious order called the Daughters of St. Vincent de Paul. So Our Lady gave or gave a drawing or asked St. Uh, Catherine Labore to, to draw in some way the miraculous medal. And there are a few things that stand out about it. So on the back, there is an M with a cross over it. The M of course symbolizes Our Lady, Mary. And then the cross above it is the cross of Our Lord propping up Our Lady, that, that the graces of Our Lord are the graces of Our Lady. Um, and then the, there's an Immaculate Heart and a Sacred Heart below it, of course, for Our Lady and Our Lord. And then also 12 stars, just like the, 12, uh, the crown of 12 stars that, that adorn Our Lady's head. Then on the front is uh, an image of Our Lady with rays coming out of her hands. These are symbols for, for the graces that she pours out upon the earth. And she's standing upon the earth as well, showing her, her queenship over it. So in this way, we, we see in, in a very literal way, the graces that Our Lady is pouring out upon those who wear the Miraculous Medal. Originally, there may have been a different name for the Miraculous Medal. It might have just been called Our Lady's Medal. But pretty quickly after the medal began getting minted or, or stamped, and it began getting distributed, uh, miracles began happening all over the place with them. So very quickly, the, the Miraculous Medal took on the name Miraculous Medal for all of the many miracles that were happening because of it. That concludes our collection of worn medals or worn uh, sacramentals. There are many other types, rings, necklaces, other medals of patron saints, crucifixes. Uh, all of these are great sacramentals, but if we tried to fill a video with them, we'd be here all day. So <laughs> thank you, and I'll see you again soon.